pearls have been a favorite gem since ancient times. Their appeal is universal. Native Americans of the upper Mississippi River Valley were wearing pearl in necklaces and other ornaments when the early French explorers arrived. The pearls came from freshwater mussels or clams found in the Mississippi River. Lake City, Minnesota was plotted in 1872 and soon became an important harbor on the banks of Lake Pepin on the Mississippi. Soon commercial fishing and freshwater clamming prospered in Lake Pepin waters. Commercial fishing for game fish and clamming has long been a booming industry on the lake due to heavy demand for pearl buttons. Sawed carefully from the shells at the Lake Pepin Pearl Button Company in Lake City and others like it on the river as far south as Muscatine, Iowa. Many of these shipped to customers worldwide. Now you can see the Pearl Button Factory building located at 226 South Washington Street in Lake City much as it was when James C. Stout constructed it in 1866 as a general merchandise business. Clamming was once a major business to Lake City. The first clammers on Lake Pepin were searching for pearls and discarded the shells. Experiments proved that shells could be utilized in the manufacturing of buttons and similar objects. In 1913, there were between five and 600 clammers who harvested about 2,400 tons of clams, and 90% of the shells were available for manufacturing purposes. About 50% of the buttons in the world once came from the upper Mississippi River. Lake City, where factory workers sawed button blanks from clam shells before shipping the 50-pound burlap bags of clam shell cutouts downriver to button finishing houses in La Crosse, Wisconsin and Muscatine, Iowa. Welcome to the Lake Pepin Pearl Button Company. I'm Mary Jane Rasmussen. Those tiny pearl buttons have quite a history in getting from the river to be made into a button. Once the clammers from the riverside cooked the clams, opened the shells, pinched the meat out, and then looked for pearls, that meat was delivered to local farmers for animal feed. The shells then made their way for several more steps. Those shells were brought to the Lake Pepin Pearl Button Company and through a chute, the shells dropped down into the clam tank where there was water. The shells needed to be kept wet for optimal cutting for if they became dry, they were too brittle and did not make good buttons. The clamshells were delivered to all floors here in the building by this hand pulley wooden elevator that is still working in a 150 year old building. Hi, I'm Steve Swan from Swan Jewelers in Lake City, Minnesota. And today we're gonna to talk about uh, some of the crow's hooks and some of the jewelry that uh, I make out of the Lake Pepin Pearls. To begin with, the clammers all made their own crow's hooks and they would take these and actually hang them from the back of their boats. And as they drifted across the bottom of the river, touching the clam would make them hook onto it and they'd actually pull up all these hooks. There'd be hundreds of them behind the boat and they'd be able to pull all these clams up and put them into the boat. They would make these um, crow's hooks, as they call them, out of wire and they would have some kind of a template made it on a board so they could make a lot of them consistently and this particular one that's quite rusty this was washed up on the beach so this is from many years ago this is one that shows how they would pull the wire together using a template and they'd wire the bottom and then they'd pull up these where it gets its name these crow's feet and they call them crow's hooks and all of the Clammers, they made their own designs. So here's just another design of something that we found and I'm sure they've made hundreds of different designs. Let me show you an example of some of the pearl jewelry that I've made. 
We do a lot in sterling silver because it's more reasonably priced, but they're all one of a kind, uh, besides the pearls being one of a kind, of course. Uh, these pearls have not been you know, cut or polished in any manner. They've been cleaned and they've been uh, drilled so that I can mount them using a two-part pearl epoxy onto the rings and pendants so that the, the jewelry will last. So these shell were used for a lot of things. They were used for buttons, they were used for hair pieces, they were used for, uh, they even made um, lures out of them for fishing. What I have here is a few different buttons, hair pieces, uh, some buttons on a card, which is a way that they would sell them. Traditionally, what they would do is make buttons out of them, and as you see here, they would cut pieces of the shell, and the bigger the shell, the more buttons they could get out of one piece. As you can see, this fits right in here, and they would take the bark off, as they would call it, and uh, send it down river to a finishing plant where they would complete them into buttons. And so these clams, they would actually, after they would have something that would get inside them, or organic matter that would um, cause them to create the nacre around the pearl, uh, they would produce a wide variety of pearls of all different colors and all different shapes and sizes. What makes them beautiful, of course, is the fact that their nacre is all the way to the bottom. They're not just a piece of shell implanted into an oyster and then with a thin layer of nacre. These are nacre all the way through. And they produce them in a variety of colors, purples and browns and champagnes and grays. They're all beautiful. And I just have a selection of a few of them here just to show the differences in the size and the shape and the colors.